to get this advanced spot. And it also makes the take that much harder if they were even to try to get in. But Tens is having none of that. Tens with the Bulldog from distance finds three. He wants four. Is he going to find himself the ace? There's one more target around the corner. Of course he is. Tens, number one. Giving themselves a two-player advantage. It's down to just Bustio now as the Phoenix to lead the charge. A nice pick off onto Shinobi to try to gain left. access to the site. There is utility down from the kill boy, Killjoy, but KJ is dead, so not a threat. Correct. And they'll go ahead and secure the spike here in just a moment. Vice still in position, but only with the Spectre. Wants to wait for his team to get there. And Tens is coming through, already charging past that cyber cage. Nice curveball through, has to dodge it. SSF, he gets the perfect peek on that. And now we find ourselves in a one-on-one. -on -one. Vice is doing great work with the darts to kind of spot, spot out that position. And despite the damage done here on the site, not only known, but they're going to have to look out for all of that pesky hardware laying on the ground. Now they decide to back off. They've pulled the rotate out because they got them to come through the portal. They know that the A site is weak. So they exploited the fact that Cloud9 has been consistently using those ports to try and go for those mid pinches. Yeah. And now they've reacted. I love the read from Space Station. It's a good adjustment. You still would have hoped some kills would have happened from that hookah area because they took control of two players there. So with one going through the teleport or even two, you would hope that they would have a 2 2 trade and take the upper hand. But now it's a tough four versus two. Or three versus four retake who evens it up on a 3-3 three, three tally. The retake is coming through now for Cloud9 Blue as Tens is moving out towards Heaven, but Land Control is still in possession of SSG. So Sef gets the headshot. He's now looking for the crossfire with, no with his teammates, but we are closing through. Thankfully, though, they do have a Hunter's Fury from Kaplan. He tags with the first, gets him off the spike, but it has been defused on halfway at least. Now on that two versus one, the attacker side for SSG in side A, and they're still going to try to come in right now just to try to see if they can get a couple of kills before, but now they're forced to fall back just because of the Killjoy lockdown. So time has been wasted. Spike at least has been planted, and now you have a good pulse plan position for Space Station Gaming. I love the fact that they still get the spike plant despite the effort from Mitch to deny it. And again, but they've been pushed out of the site. You can see the remaining members have to push through Hookah back into mid. Mitch is here with the Odin and the spam is just a little bit late. Roka is able to take out Mitch. And that'll make control of spawn a little bit easier and neutralize the positions of players coming through from Hookah. They're all coming through from the same spots, mostly. Everyone trying to work their way through Hookah. Luckily, Shinobi able to pick off two. That gives Tens an escape route as he wow. tailwinds into his own smoke. But you kind of feel like the writing was on the roll of Long B, and they've got players in Hookah as well. They'll be popping out onto the site in just a moment. Mitch gets smoked out. He's stuck inside that dark cover. There's a Leer that comes through, but Mitch somehow able to spot out Roka. So that's a nice little pickup as they try to gain access to the site. Bustio still able to push back into the backside. And they'll also go ahead and take out the Nano Swarm that would have been directly underneath the spike as it goes down inside Tuna. The retake is already well underway. And that's Tens with a dirty shot through the steel container. Yeah, Tens looking for more as well. An absolutely ridiculous flick back from Tens. The spike planted inside. It's almost impossible for Kaplan yeah. to do anything Roll about on, it. Roll. You mentioned it back off just a bit. <sighs> Advanced positions currently, and they're trying to set up a potential uh, pinch. Excuse me. Bustio does push through and find some on the other side of showers. That allows SF to get into this position as well. And now a follow-up through the port from Bustio as he's got their Heads looking in multiple directions. They've been put on a, a swivel, but unfortunately, it all falls apart. SSG had that advantage. They had that strong position. I don't think they anticipate Mitch being in this spot, so things are starting to fall apart. It's all up to SF, who is now going to be able to upgrade. But look at what he's got left. Three HP and a dream for the Cypher <laughs> against a raise. You gotta, exactly you gotta love the, the pinch, ideal though. scenario. Yeah, you're definitely you're definitely happy with the pinch, and you know with the run it back that they use for Space Station Gaming, the rest of them you saw it was sort of an ego. So this this being salvaged by uh, SF, and if it could actually get maybe some damage, maybe a kill, even if the spike goes off, you're happy with the result for Space Station Gaming. But 
Relics at this point, he doesn't know how much HP his opponent has, and sometimes you've seen in the past matches throughout this tournament that 3 HP, 4 HP, 1 HP is definitely good enough to still win the round. So SF is committing to this. He's gonna start, he's gonna tap on his spike to push him out and even force out an ultimate. So this is huge right now, and it misses. But finally, Relics gets the kill, salvages the round for Cloud9 Blue, and we have a nine to spin. Managed to bring it to an almost winnable position. Yeah, but... The, but the economy's the, still low for SSG, so I'm thinking yeah. now at this point, they did go I for a buy previously, but it works out with the first kill here. Again, a back and forth volley. Take flight. Th this happened last round. The difference was last round. Space Station had rifles. Uh, this round, they get yeah. aggressive on short, and they try to push back Cloud9 just a bit. And they take the fight straight to their doorstep. We do find ourselves in a three-on-three. Three. There's some economic damage dealt for sure. And Space Station, even if they do lose this round, they still have control of the scoreboard. A buy will follow in the round after this. Mm -hmm. And that's when the pressure's on. Still two players over towards B. There's one on A currently. You've got Sova, who's sitting inside lamps. Should be Kaplan. Yep. Who's sitting on a frenzy. One of the few players that didn't opt for a Sheriff on the round. And we've seen that already in the past. Bustio over in Hookah and Roka on site, both on Sheriffs as well. So the pressure is on for Kaplan to try and find thirty kill, seconds maybe left. scoop up a weapon if possible. Realistically, though, this should be around for Cloud9, yeah. especially with the lockdown. And I think he's okay, Kaplan, right now. I don't think he's going to peek. He's going to call that the Spike plan's coming planted. here. He's going to wait for his teammates. And while he yeah. doesn't give away his position, if you somebody's going to try to walk into U-Haul to take control, okay, that lockdown's going to be huge now. It's going to be pretty much impossible for Kaplan to get out. So he wants to get a kill at least with him before he falls. And he goes face-to-face -face against Mitch. Gets the tap. Gets the kill. That is perfect for him right now. And as the lockdown will happen, he could maybe break it because he was out there on the top but it's not going to happen, and it's going to be Relics that gets the kill. But it's a two Adam versus baby. two. They know where the last two players are at. Roka looking for the shots out of the Sheriff. It's a blast pack that gets Relics into a better position. But now it's down to Vice. Vice is holding, and they're just going to try and stick the spike. Does he have the time? Of course he doesn't. He's going for it, but he realized it's already lost. What can you do? Vice is hunting, looking for the kill. Vice <laughs> actually gets it on the money. Spike planted. And it is going to do some damage there to SF. So Relic's able to move up further and further. The drone's going to spot out one. Well played. Good combination move coming in from Cloud9. SF does turn back, but in that time, there's Tens finally peeking from short. It's SSG with the player disadvantage. Shinobi's right around the corner in U-Haul. Currently, Bustio decides to take his push somewhere else for the time being. With the curveball around the corner, that's a nice way to open things up. Still has the blaze wall as well to work with. Goes with the flash, and it's actually going to come down to now a one on one. Again, the blaze wall is still here. So Bustio can try to work this one. Throws down the hot hands. Has to just stick it and hope for the best. Not going to happen. That round was oh so important to. Here. The thing is for SSG, you're right. They, they had to force themselves on a previous round, which paid off. In, in their favor. I know exactly where you are. The pickoff from Vice with the ult. It, it gave them a tiny little opportunity, but Space Station quickly stomps that one out as they respond in kind yeah. with the rifles that were mostly brought in from the previous round. Mm -hmm. A gift from Cloud9. Cloud9 now grouping up towards short. They don't really have much map control currently, so they're just going to push up further and further. That dart is going to scare Shinobi away, so what little Charges. advanced positions they had lost, and yeah. even pushing back into that spot now is a little bit risky, given that the dart kind of sold out the play. A dark cover will come through as Mitch goes for a left. pickup on a rifle. will find himself oh. vandal. But oh no! Not prepared for that. SF <laughs> just stamps through the smoke <laughs> as Mitch is gun juggling, trying to make things work, and uh, yeah, that just didn't pan out the way that he had hoped. Yeah, I was gonna say that's good. You can pick up the rifle, reload, go through the teleporter, and hit B. With the time remaining, now you come in to B, but you don't have any really big weapons to work with. Big dart that's gonna spot one, but Inski probably still had a paranoia, and on a retake would actually throw that paranoia in that little cubby area where most people would try to hold a tight angle but they played it much closer and they caught SSG off that rotation back. So I like it how you readjust and how you adapt uh, to these type of gameplays. And from scrubbing all of these teams, you kind of have a, a feel of how these players are playing. And now for, on their side for SSG, they kind of have an expectation that 
it's still going to be a slow play from Cloud9, left. and this time going to be affected towards this B side. And that paranoia hits his teammate for a bit, but Mitch still tries to move in. Big dart that allows Seth to get two kills. A showstopper to come out. That's going to connect, but not until he gets a third kill of himself. So now it's a three versus two. The spike looking to move back here to get a plan towards the A side. It might happen at triple. And as they rotate back, they do have Spike one planted. man under for Cloud9. And SSG is looking big on this retake. Because you went for the teleport, they knew it was happening. You already had two guys on half rotations. So it was a faster retake now for Cloud9. Vice stuck on a three versus one. They know exactly where he's at. As the first shot rings, he goes for the recon dart. So there's certainly opportunity here. There's the paranoia and the flash to lead them in. A bit of vulnerability applied as the alarm bot will Huge. spot out 10. But those flashes yeah. push them back. Oh. And with that position, Hens doesn't have to do much, just clicks into the belly of Bustio, and it's almost a freebie kill. Yeah, it was down to 10 HP, though, so this could still be very doable for SSG to hold things up. But Skyler, well, he says no, he has different plans, and he opens it up towards that site. He gets quickly traded out, up from the heavens, Insky, though, gets traded out. As now it's on a two versus one. Only Vice on his own. Spike has not been planted, and it's dropped in a position that's unreachable, unattainable for Vice. So he has to win this one versus one versus Roka. And as he crosses over, there's going to be the second player. Spots him, perfect angle. Cap with the fall. And he's not even going for that spike. The barrel sticks out. He's in a great position now for the upper hand. Goes for the spray, the dink, the repeat from Roka. And he wins it with the wall bang himself. And it's going to be 2-1 to one now for SSG. ...from Cloud9, and it's allowing Tens to get into an incredibly advanced position. Now, yeah. Shinobi has popped his ult and has snuck onto the site. There's dark cover coming out from him. Tens will get picked off, and a bold move from Inski that stops the spike from crossing into the site and wow. brings things down to now just one. Vice will at least get a spike plant out of this, even though it is in a ballsy position completely in the open. But... At that point, there's just too many directions to look. And look, they're all full on ultimates too for spaces because of the dash that came in from Tens on B Heaven, which now a fire rate that you have from an Empress versus a Stinger. The Stinger wins, but they have an answer of their own into this round. They decide to aggress back towards mid. Bustio gets the first kill, and then even two more is chimed in from Roka. So they don't allow C9 to really run away with anything off that thrifty that they had on our previous round. And you only have relics. And he's already in a position where, you know, he might want to save into the last... I mean, he's got a minute. So he could really try to turn things around and maybe try to get uh, any picks if anybody's going to try to push aggressively for SSG. But they know that the spike is down towards ramen side and they still don't want to commit to anything too uh, aggressive for Spikes SSG. Here. They just want to molly down to 83 HP, and that forces the hand back towards the B side because you also have tens that push up towards heaven. He catches the first kill. The ult is wasted towards the A side on top of that. So SF and now also Kaplan will have to try to retake on a two versus two. Thankfully, though, Spike Relics is low HP. Right there. Two on two, a promising scenario for Cloud9. Like you said, though, Relics low on health. In a good spot, though, up on the balcony. That <laughs> flash, <laughs> just so powerful. Kaplan in the one-on-one, -on -one, has to guess right. Spray gets away from him, but at the same point in time, Kaplan didn't take any damage. Still at That's full crazy. armor and HP. I thought for sure, Busio. But yeah, a dash that came through, the satchel charges on top, and that is how you win the round in the end for Cloud9. Two big entries, and now it's going to be an open site. I think at this point you're saving for a Space Station Gaming. Spike planted. You play so close and you dash through. I mean, <laughs> that was nice. Space Station not looking so hot here after a nice string of rounds. Cloud9 found an opening and took advantage of it. Flawless. And flawless round win. Limited damage even being dealt by Space. That happened from Seth at A side. 30 seconds left. SF has popped off at times as well, so SF going to be tasked with this challenge. Able to pick off the first one as Relics goes for the cross, but has to surrender at that point. I'll, I'll give them sight control as the dark cover makes it Spike too planted. difficult for much impact for their Killjoy. SF, here's that Shadow Step, has no idea where Omen moved to. Inski now coming to the bottom of ropes as well. 
This is certainly a winnable scenario. It has to start here. And unfortunately, as that happens, another kill came through as well onto Bustio. So the numbers have shifted heavily in favor of Cloud9. SFG now down to just one. And it's the player who tried to kick things off on the defense. And then they know that SF is stuck in screen. Spam already coming through dark cover. Not much can be done for SF. It was at least in the defense. It's going to put pressure on some of these players who are so low on HP. You've got Bustio, who's on two health. You've also got a Killjoy, who's heavily tagged up. They're looking for players back behind the play, but they have to first deal with this wow. one. Over in Hell, and somehow these are starting to come together. One Frenzies. Just a little bit stronger than it once was. Mitch taps the spike. It's down to the one-on-one. -on -one. The fault line comes through, but there's the swing wide. Don't interrupt my and it's work. it's Mitch. Who's found now three kills on the round as Killjoy. We cool. talked about Mitch coming into this map with Mitch's performance drastically. Second half and already trailing behind by three. Inside. It's going to be very difficult to do. You're going to have to try to rely on something here and they don't have the ultimates to work with. So they're just going to go straight up here on the top. It's going to be Bustio Sapo charge with a frenzy to get a kill. But they lost two players in the process. They just want to get into the site at least to get the spike plant. Spike planted. All right, a promising take from Space Station. They've managed to scrape this one together and they've snuck a spike plant into the no mix. Charges. Shinobi looking to clear out corners and yeah, that's well played. Yeah. Good utilization of that breach charge. Now Bustio's in heaven, started off with the frenzy and now upgrades to the Vandal. The spike not at all planted for him and the flashes make this impossible. The spike's gonna be defused in here in a second. Uh, at least it's an expensive round. Like, I'll, I'll give them that. Been for business. Nonetheless, though, you still see the first operator to come in hand on this match, on this map even. But it's trading off here from you a showstopper run. from Bustio, so that's relics to fall. Ultimate to be locked down, put at the screens, courtesy of Mitch, but they still make it inside the A side to go for a plant. Vice on a huge rotation right now, and a big paranoia allows Shinobi to get the kill onto SF. Spike is now planted on the three versus three. Aftershock at the same corner, but it's going to be Tense that's able to dodge that for a bit. Leer to come out. One is lurking down towards the elbow, and that is going to be Shinobi. First contact versus Roka. A second one versus Bustio, who wins it. He's trying to go for the flick. That's picking a tent, but it's on a one versus one. Spike is now planted behind the map. They're looking for the off angle, and Vinsky is going to win that one with the head. Should be Cloud9's map to take. We almost all have predicted a three-map series. Great move from Bustio this time around to use that blast pack to fly up into heaven. That's a weapon pickup as well. Can Bustio do something with it? Mitch is stuck in back sight. Missed shots coming out from the off. He survives a little while longer. And there's Kaplan with the flying classic around the corner. Great quick peek coming in from 10, who just doesn't want to wait. Who will see first? It comes down to 10s. And now it's Bustio, the last player standing. 12 rounds go on the board. It was a promising push from Space Station, but 10s just had no patience whatsoever. Exactly. And it worked. We'll see what they've got. There's Mitch with an aggressive turret in B main. I love this play because they use the flash off the back of that as well. There's the lockdown being popped, but it, it's kind of risky, right? Like they have yeah. to throw it down just because of the fear of what's coming that direction. Rolling Thunder to lead them in. I love this for Mitch. He wants to try and take out the ult, but he's unable to do so. They finally get there to take it out, but look at what it cost them. Almost more than it would have cost them to just let the ult go. Yeah. Pens, meanwhile, from heaven, Skeet shooting currently with the AWP, and yeah, he's just having fun at this point. He's found three Get kills on the round, way. and it's down to Kaplan. The knives are out as well. It looks like the writing is on the wall as it's Kaplan who's trying to make it onto the site. That's just tense. Doing what tense does back out. They have a Silva back in the hands of Kaplan, and the same thing for Cloud9, where it seems that the breach may be not as viable as you're talking about. Pick, off pick, pick, off pick. And this time, no breach here, and a first kill as SF falls down on the staircase and shock darts. There you go. You don't have a breach, you got shock darts for kills. Spike planted. Iski and company trying to get back in after Cloud9 again gobbled up sight control. And this time the bullets are pouring through the wall and they're going straight into the belly of Roka. You can hear the drone come out from Reyna as Roka looks to gain an advanced position. We talked about how important this would be. Look at this late play coming in though. You've still got Sova in B main depending on the peak. Wow. It's Yeah, this is 
This is brutal. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to pretend like I'm some sort of blast packs. Darts. Let's stop talking because they're rushing straight into the A side again. But Roker connects with the headshot from Generator. Quickly traded out though by Relics. Already the defense on the A side. When we set the shares for Green True here for SSG, it got immediately denied here by Cloud9. They get into a site. It's going to be a four run. versus three. You are trying to move in with these pistols. And a nice dart actually as you're trying to spray through, but that's not going to kill anybody there. Full HP or very healthy at least for Cloud9 and things are looking not too great for SSG to, to try to get these rounds, especially with the lockdown. Two of them will get detained, so it's going to be a bait. You're going to try to get a kill there from Seth, but it's not going to happen. Even a temp of a knife kill, you're able to make a way through the corner at least as well, where that's the point at which you can get an op and play. And that's the point at which you have, like, the full utility that you maybe didn't have that first time around. Tens tries to fly in, but without backup, what's a man supposed to do? Now, as I say that, they've managed to bring things back to at least a manageable yeah, position. It's a three on two. Oh, I love this. The Molly goes into the corner, but it doesn't go deep enough. Mitch is actually able to avoid the flames just for the time being. The Al drone will go in first, looking for some intel, looking to spot a player out if possible. And the drone will send a dart into the belly of the Phoenix, who's in position towards spawn. As the pulses continue to come through, Mitch actually runs dry on the magazine, has to go for a fresh one. There's still a player on site, and it's his opposing killjoy, the doppelganger, if you will. There's the dart that comes in. I love the play, but it doesn't work out. It was a bait shot from that dart to get him to look away. Yeah. But with the low HP and the transfer over, there's only so much that can be done. Now, the spike's been picked up by Mitch, and Mitch is hightailing it out of there to get across the site. So, you see Mitch now moving on over to the A site. A spike plant will come through. Alarm bot goes down. He's got double nano swarm. Ten seconds left. So there's a possibility to try and play the time here in the post plant. A little bit early on the Killjoy ult, but again, he doesn't see what we see. He doesn't know what we know. And that'll at least allow him some time to collect his thoughts and gather up a plan. Placing swarm grenade. Well, they both moved away after the lockdown, and he places a perfect molly on at the pulse plant too. Oh. Seth's not going to hear it. He has the lockdown himself, but SF. He's going to have to try to move quick. Mitch is at low HP. This could still be doable, but now with that clock running down, he has to come out quick. And from that, the peak, he gets the kill, but I don't know if he has enough time. Yeah, he doesn't, so he has to fall back and save his gun. And I don't even think he's going to do that. I think he dies. Yeah. Really well. And that's the first time we've really seen them successfully go for an aggressive look early. But off the back of that, Cloud9's just going to charge into this B site. And yeah. it's looking okay for Space Station. They find two kills initially. Shinobi goes through the smokes. But SF is still on the site doing big things, and there's still one more here as well, but somehow Inski comes up empty-handed. So, despite their early efforts, we're still at a two-on-two. They still had it for SSG, though. All the information, you talked about aggressive plays, the double push to start things off to get the first kill, but at the same time, they pushed Catwalk, and they also pushed Aiming all the way through spawn. And once again, that's Busio. <laughs> Uh, a flank on a different map, but on to this map, he spawn always goes all the way through spawn, which maybe wastes a little bit of time, but goes for a bigger backstab. But that clock is ticking down. Thankfully, we're low HP for Cloud9. What? HP doesn't matter. Mitch is at 11. It's on a one versus one, but the right click comes through for Bustio. He's going to have enough time. The diffuse is going to come through. And, and what I was trying to say is from him flanking all the way towards spawn and already having Roka up on catwalk, they knew oh, the attack was eventually going to happen towards the B side. You should run. There's yeah, an old especially with that. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like Roka's falling for this one, but he does change positions, goes inside the door. 30 seconds left. And that's going to allow them to just get right on out. So the smoke comes through, but there's a gap, and Roka can play with that. There's the dismiss as well. SF has picked up the kill onto Bitch. Tense does eventually drop Five Roka, points. but they're already moving into position. They've already made it up to heaven so done. as the spike touches pay dirt. Uh, shock darts flying out in both directions. It's a beautiful display of fireworks on the site, but no damage has been dealt. It's purely aesthetic. Vice in position, tries to do a lot, but only does a little. One kill for him, and it's all the pressure now onto Tens. Tens finds the first. He's got six HP. 
just guesses wrong on the that. Um, it's gonna have to be some utilities from uh, from what they have, but they don't really have any type of utilities to counter it back. Not that said, though, they are holding back towards the A side. It's gonna be a push through, but a three versus one in the end. With only one stuck inside that site, it's gonna be Mitch. Full HP, first kill. Bulldog in hand. It bites on the first. Cancels out the uh, recon guard as well. He pulls the door and pick up a Vandal. But the last two players, now he knows that it's gonna be somewhere up towards that heaven. And especially with that peak, Sp awesome, both including the turret. With still plenty of time, he could still make it a death match. That's two separate one versus one. We're seeing here. They don't very, have a very different. But like, let's see how it works. And again, this is another player we talked about was Relics. You know, what was Relics' impact going to be look like, looking like? It was more on the attack, not so much on the defense, as uh -huh. typically speaking, he's been on the lurk on the B yeah, side and watching for the pushes left. over in that direction. But this time he opens things up here for Cloud9. Nice response from Roka, who tries to get across. There's Relics again, coming up big. And the nade is actually huge. It's going to land right in their laps. It's going to do significant damage. Kaplan, who's down to 61 HP, is the sole remaining member of Space Station and now has to fight his way out of the scenario Ten with seconds 11 left. seconds left. Has to go for the dedicated plant. plant. That shock dart is right on the money. Vice. I mean, he's just going for those bangs. He nearly canceled out. This is going to be so hard right now for Space Station Gaming to retake, especially with the Nano Swarms coming on the ground. Hunter's Fury to come out at the same time, too. Does not connect, but Roka still gets an opener. Here comes the Showstopper, connects onto Roka, and it's train after trade. A one-man advantage, made that tied up. And it's still gonna be a one versus one in the end as Inski kills him. Versus Vice, it's just a tr I mean, had to try to run in through their own blaze wall, and then it was just open season for tens and for relics. When they had a four versus two, it was just the perfect picks on that timing for Cloud9, and they're holding their ground. They're holding it even more. You should run. Four kills away from winning the series and making it to the playoffs of the UMG close qualifier. And it starts off now with them being pushed out or continued with them being pushed away from the ultimate, but they're not committing on this right now. It's wasted. There's the shots coming out, and it's, yeah, it's all starting to spiral, but hold on. SF pops off, finds three. No way! Bustio is now in a one on two, and no, oh, no. Bustio actually runs into it. Oh, no! Defenders Bustio! He tries to 